The lemons almost look like oranges from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all are. I mean, that tree back there, that was an orange tree for a hundred years before it was pruned with a lemon. I mean, most of the trees you see here were oranges. So they have to be nurtured the whole time so they don't grow back as oranges. It's a very time-consuming and ongoing process. Getting away from it all, our tree and a dear home in Pierce Brosnan, heading to Sorrento for the wedding of his son and her daughter. Pierce is sour like lemon, Trin as sweet as an orange. Anyone with basic botanical knowledge and or love rom-coms will see how to squeeze the juice out of this one. Mm. Did you know that, botanically speaking, the lemon is a berry? No. Catherine, mamma mia, here we go again. It is um, how I can resist you. Uh, it is. It does bear a lot of similarities to Mamma Mia. It's. It's strange. I was expecting something much more uh, meaty, much more serious, much more kind of. Um, you know, it premiered at Venice, didn't it? It was. It was a real sort of high art sell. Um, it is a bit like a sort of beach read uh, that you might feel slightly embarrassed about reading. <laughs> but it, you know, it's also. You know, it's, it's, the thing is, it's like a Mills and Boone. It's sort of very, it's very unnuanced. You've got this, you know, Piers Brosnan, there is no question that everybody fancies the pants off him. There's this poor young girl who works in his office who's desperate for him, and he says, look, love, it's never going to happen. Everyone fancies him. Um, it's so kind of, cliche, you know, it's so cliché. The other guy, her husband, who's cheating on her, is cheating on her with a kind of crazy dolly bird. He's unbelievably unappealing. You know, there's no question what should be happening here. She's unbelievably upbeat, estrangedly sort of every woman yet kind of freaky, freaky happy heron. Thing is, sounds crap. In fact, by the end, I was kind of involved in the way that you are with a beach read. I was, you know, I did care. Yeah, Peter, I think Catherine's right. It's weirdly easy to digest this. Sort of. I think it's uh, Suzanne Beer is very. It's very interesting because she she's associated with Zentropo pictures. She's associated with this. Oh, they're kind of the dark side of Danish filmmaking. But she's also very Hollywood. She's made a movie in Hollywood. Two of her films have been just remade as straight Hollywood pictures. So she's intensely aware of the remake and how it's positioned in the marketplace. She must have been intensely aware of Mamma Mia all the way through it. I found it a weird kind of film bred in a Petri dish to look like and sound like a classic beach read, as you say, movie. Uh, there is a weird nuance at the end. What happens to the younger generation's love? There is a something kind of dark happens there, but slightly bafflingly unmotivated. We're not quite sure why what happens happens, to be quite honest with you. And I, I like you, I was expecting a big reveal, which doesn't quite happen. There's an almost kind of festive moment when there's a kind of, oh my God, moment of, of, of awfulness. I thought it was, it was like a copy, a, a very accomplished copy of a movie wh which really has its heart in that sort of thing. I mean, when they cranked up uh, Dean Martin at the beginning with all those touristy shots of uh, the Amalfi Coast and Sorrento, I thought it was just a weird uh, pastiche of an autumn year's romantic movie, uh, done with technical accomplishment, but weirdly unconvincing. Michael, Michael, you can't be both worthless and unambitious. It's his seventh birthday. He won't even remember you being there. Just buy him a card and get on the plane. Are we clear? Good. Thank you. I really don't understand why anybody will work for you. When you're so awful and stupid and not nice. I pay him good money.